Good evening, everybody. It is 6 o'clock here in Florida. And peace and love and blessings to everybody. Okay, you guys. Um, I was going to do a video on John 15 this evening. But uh, something has taken precedence over that. And, well, I want to give some clarification on some scriptures. Uh, because there's been another video that has been put out that is just all over the place and uh, the word is not being rightly divided and uh, it's being taken out of context and it's well it's very confusing uh, like I said before you cannot mix oil and water you cannot mix law and grace um, we are under the law of Christ which uh, he was a better thing to come and uh, well you know uh, faith produces love and uh, when we don't understand certain things about God's Word because we've been taught. I just don't know how to put it, you guys, other than rubbish. We've been taught rubbish uh, that the blood atonement just isn't good enough that we have to add to and maintain. It wasn't a free gift. It wasn't a free gift. So Scripture is, is lying that our salvation is not free. We are having to be obedient to uh, maintain or add to or to show that we are saved. So we're having to do something to add to the equation. And, well, that's, uh, that's not biblical. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to share some scriptures with you. And this one here is, um, well, it's a very short teaching, but it's a very good teaching. And this is on Hebrews 5, 9. And uh, it's talking about unto all them that obey him. Here we go. Hey guys, quick video on the subject of obeying God for salvation. The Bible says in Hebrews chapter 5, verse 9, and being made perfect, he became the author of eternal salvation unto all them that obey him. Now the question is, how do we obey God for salvation? Are we obeying the commandments? Are we obeying the Bible in general? What do we have to obey? And how do we obey that? Well, the Bible says in 2 Thessalonians chapter 1, verse 8, In flaming fire, taking vengeance on them that know not God, and that obey not the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. So in context of salvation, to receive salvation, to be saved, we have to obey God. How? We have to obey the gospel. So now the question is, what is the gospel? Well, the Bible tells us that in 1 Corinthians chapter 15. The Bible says this, Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel which I preached unto you, which also ye have received, and wherein ye stand, by which also ye are saved, if ye keep in memory what I preached unto you, unless ye have believed in vain. For I delivered unto you, first of all, that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day according to the scriptures. So according to 1 Corinthians chapter 15, the gospel is the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. And we obey that gospel by believing that gospel. Believing that Jesus Christ died for our sins, was buried, and physically rose again from the dead to save our souls by simple faith. That is how we obey the gospel. This is not teaching a works-based salvation. This is not teaching a lordship salvation, as Amen. some would lead you to think. Amen. It's teaching simply that we are saved by the gospel, by obeying the gospel, which is the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. How do we obey that? Believe on the Lord Jesus Believe. Christ, and thou shalt be saved. Amen. Woo! Thank you, brother. Okay, so now I have, uh, well, a few more because and if I was to tackle all the scriptures that were being put in this our Savior this uh, particular commentary well we'd be here all day uh, and, I mean if some people would like to help me <laughs> that would be fine uh, so anyways I'm going to go to another scripture that was used and uh, this is Matthew and we all know this wonderful scripture uh, Matthew 7 21 to 23 and I, I do use the King James Version, you guys, because to me that is the eldest of the uh, manuscripts and the most accurate, okay? 
Now, this says, Not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter the kingdom of heaven. But he that doth the will of my Father, which is in heaven. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, we have not. Have we not prophesied in thy name, and in thy name have cast out devils, and in thy name done many wonderful works? And then will I profess unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me that work iniquity. Now these are people that are doing works. These are people that are saying, Lord, Lord, haven't I, haven't we, haven't we, haven't we, haven't we. Haven't we done this? Haven't we done that? Haven't we done that? Now, let's go back. This says, Not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, but he that doth the will of my Father which is in heaven. Well, what is the will of the Father? It says in 6, 2, 9, um, that is John 6, 2, 9. Jesus answered and said unto them, This is the work of God, that ye believe on him whom he hath sent. Amen. Amen. And amen. Uh, it is about faith. Believing on the Lord Jesus. And as far as... Um, our righteousness uh, surpassing the Pharisees and the Sadducees. Well, uh, we'll get into that here in just a second. I'm going to read this one right here. This is, um, let's see, this was, I'm trying to remember. Oh, James, James 2, this was used too, uh, which is, uh, again, not being understood, unfortunately. Uh, you know, what it's doing is it's creating fear and making people think that they have to be perfect. Because it's either one or the other. You're either under grace or you have to follow the whole entire law. And, uh, well, we'll see that here in just a second when I read this. Okay, so this says, now this is James 2, and this is James starting at 8 to 8. Ye fulfill the royal law according to the scripture. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. Ye do well. Now, the royal law is the law of Christ. It is the law of love. He said, love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your mind, with all your soul, with all your strength, and love one another. And on those two commandments hang the whole law, the whole Torah. And then it says, but if ye have respect to persons, ye commit sin, and are convinced of the law as transgressors. For whosoever, now here's the kicker, you guys. For whosoever shall keep the whole law, 613 of the Torah, and yet offend in one point, he is guilty of all. Have you ever offended in one point of the law? Did you ever tell a lie? Did you ever yell at your mom? Uh, did you ever steal anything? Did you ever think something bad? Were you ever angry? You know, when you're angry towards your brother, that's committing murder. Mm -hmm. When you're hateful and hate, hate, have hatred in your heart. All those things have you ever missed one point of the law? And uh, I could tell you, I'll bet you everybody has, because uh, in the law, in the 613 of the Torah, also known as the Tanakh or the uh, teaching, well, you're not even supposed to be eating anything that has blood or fat in it. Like, you know, a big old fat juicy hamburger or steak. No, you're not supposed to be eating that. That's according to the law. You're not supposed to be shaving your beard. Cutting off the corners of your beard if you're a male. It's against the law. Females, you're not supposed to be wearing pants. It's against the law. So if you want to put yourself back under the law, that is what you'll be doing. And, oh, i got 600 and, let's see, 11 more to go. Hmm. Things we do every single day that we have no clue about that we are doing. And we should not be doing it because it is against the law. And it says right here. For whosoever shall keep the whole law, and yet offend in one point, he is guilty of all. For he that said, do not commit adultery, said also, do not kill. 
Now if thou commit no adultery, yet if thou kill, thou art become a transgressor of the law. And you know, it says that um, that we are sinners and that the wages of sin is death. And the only way for us to supersede the righteousness of the Pharisees and of the Sadducees is that Jesus' righteousness be imputed to us through our faith. That's it. You can't get any more righteous than that. He's perfect. He's God. So, now it says, For he shall have judgment without mercy, that hath showed no mercy, and mercy rejoices, rejoiceth against judgment. What doth it profit, my brethren, though a man say he hath faith, and have not works? Can faith save him? If a brother or sister be naked and destitute of daily food, and one of you say unto them, Depart in peace, be ye warmed and filled, notwithstanding ye give them not the things which are needful to the body, but that the profit them. Even so, faith, if it hath not works, is dead being alone. Yea, a man may say, Thou hast faith, and I have works. Show me thy faith without thy works, and I will show you the my faith by my works. I'll say that again. Yea, a man may say, Thou hast faith, and I have works. Show me thy faith without thy works, and I will shew thee my faith by my works. What does that mean? What does that, what does that verse mean? Well, first of all, the whole scripture in James 2 is about love. It's about love. It's about perseverance and love. And that uh, when we get uh, the Holy Spirit, the agape love of the Holy Spirit, indwellment, because we are believing upon our Lord Jesus, well, then we get measures of love. And, of course, we go through things that uh, cultivate us and prune us into having more. And it depends on the individual. Everybody's different. Everybody comes from different cultures. Cultures. You've heard me say this, you guys. No two brains are alike. No two childhoods. No two scarring. Somebody may have strongholds. There's all kinds of things. And the Lord loves us right where we are at. Now, it says in Galatians 5, 6. Because I, I, I want everybody to understand this. What it means to have works because of my faith. Yea, a man may say, Thou hast faith, and I have works. Show me thy faith without thy works, and I will show you my faith by my works. Galatians 5, 6, For in Jesus Christ neither circumcision availeth anything, nor uncircumcision, but faith which worketh by love. Which worketh by love. So, right here we have this particular scripture showing that you're going to send these people away with no food, no clothing, and, oh, that's not very good. That means that you're not, uh, something's amiss in your walk with God. Uh, either you are not believing in Jesus and you don't indwell the Holy Spirit because the Holy Spirit will guide us into the right direction of the right things to do. In life, okay. So let's go on to the next thing, or maybe this was the last thing that I had. Yeah, uh, these three things right here have been taken out of context and used in such a way to, um, well, argue the point that we are to be obedient in order to be saved. And they're saying, oh no, 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 no. It's just that you are uh, obedient when you are saved. It's about love. It's about loving God and loving one another. Are we perfect? No. Are we going to be perfect ever? No. Not until we get our new incorruptible bodies that have no sin nature. Okay? 
We all have little things here and there. I don't care who you are, how perfect you think you are. You have fear? You got any fear? That's against God. Do you know that's a sin? Mm-hmm. Gluttony? Eating too much? Did you know that's a sin? Yeah. Pride? That's a sin. Bitterness? Jealousy? All kinds of things, you guys, that are filth in the flesh. That we go through, even if it's momentarily within our lives, uh, in our brains, uh, we're none perfect. And we have none upheld the law. Not a one of us. So, we're unclean. We're just an unclean vessel. And we need the Lord Jesus' righteousness that is imputed to us. So, anyways, I just wanted to put this out there. I wanted to share what um, Hebrews um, 5, 9 I believe it was, uh, uh, what it actually meant in that particular verse. See, if we take things out of context and we don't study to show ourselves approved, uh, well, this is the kind of stuff that we come up with, okay, that is fictitious and, well, it just does, it does not set right with the Spirit. But anyways, God bless each and every one of you. I hope you guys have a beautiful night tonight in our Lord. I pray to the Father that some people would please, please try and have an open mind, an open ear, and an open heart. And just listen to some of these grace channels that are on here. There are some really good teachers, and they know what they're talking about. They've searched the scripture. They're rightly dividing the word. They're taking things in context. And, uh, well, not only that, we've experienced it. We know it in our spirits that we are saved and we are sealed. And there is nothing, nothing that is required but our faith upon our beautiful Lord and Savior, Jesus. Amen and amen.